Hi folks, this is Bill. I'm going to be doing a redneck review on the Cobalt 7 inch sliding tile saw. It's actually item number 632781 on the Lowe's website. Cobalt is actually just Lowe's store brand name. The reason I'm calling this a redneck review is for a couple of reasons. One, I do not pretend to be a tile guy. I've never cut tile before, I've never done tile work, I've never done brick work before. But when I got the estimate for what they wanted to remodel my kitchen, I was like, ah, heck no, I think I can do that for a whole lot less money and I can do it myself. So I decided to take a run at it and see what happens. Um, I don't know, I showed you a few pictures and you'll be the judge. You know, I also called it a redneck review because I had to do some redneck stuff to this saw. Um, this thing is a water throwing son of a gun. When I, I expected some water to be thrown, but not as much. And I'm going to show you what I did, my redneck repairs I came up with to stop the saw from throwing so much water. But we'll get to that in a bit. I'm going to start basically at the base of the saw and tell you what I learned about it and by using it and what I noticed about it. And we'll go through the whole thing. Setup on the saw was actually pretty easy. The toughest setup on the whole thing was this base. Um, I would say get a six pack, invite your neighbor over. You need several hands. Just make sure you put the B bracket on the right side on the first try and it'll all be good. Another reason for calling this a redneck review is because I am no professional cameraman, nor do I pretend to be. I'm just doing this on the old iPhone 6. So if it ain't good enough for you, well, I reckon that's why there's a back button on your browser. You know what I found um, when I first started shopping for saws? was there are some pro reviews, there are some quick reviews, there are some snapshots, but there was no real solid reviews on any saws where you could actually see what they did. Um, but I did a lot of homework, I shopped and I studied and I looked at the $50 versions and what they were capable of and, and uh, I did a lot of research and I finally decided on a saw and it happened to be at Lowe's so I went to Lowe's and walked in the door and bought this saw instead. This is actually their newest, latest model, um, replacing the one that I had decided to buy. And they happened to have two in stock, and the guy told me that I was the first one to buy it. So I don't know if that's true or not. Well, let's just start. Okay, you have this guide along the base. Um, it's somewhat helpful, but most of your real tight measurements are notched out. Um, when I first started using it, I thought, what the heck are these mark guide marks so wide for? I mean, they're darn near an eighth inch wide. And so I'm trying to build a Swiss, Swiss watch here, so how's that going to be accurate? Well, as I used the saw, what I realized is those things are the width of the blade. So if you just pay attention, you can strategize and you can um, use that to your advantage in helping you know exactly where your blade is going to fall when you're trying to make cuts. And it worked out pretty cool, actually. The second thing is the fence. The fence seemed to work pretty well so far. Um, I used it for some 45s and I've used it for some different angle cuts. Um, it has a knob here that you can loosen so that you can set the angle that you want it at. It's notched, and you can hear it click. It's notched at 0, 22 and a half, and 45. So you can hear it click to that position. And then click to the 45 position. You can hear it kind of click into place. Um, that's pretty cool and you can set it at all different angles. You can, it's, it's pretty versatile and I like the idea of being able to do that. The one thing about the fence that I noticed right up front, if you watch as I tighten this up, if you, when you line up your work, um, if that, and you set your measurement to exactly, let's say you set it to exactly what you're after, as you tighten the fence down, you're gonna see the top of the fence move to the right. So it's not much of a shift, but it's enough, that we're, especially if you're using a larger piece um, where it could cause some issues. But notice that the measurement stayed pretty, pretty consistent. Um, takes a little getting used to, but it's not a big deal after you use it. The next thing was this tray. This tray actually turned out to be pretty handy that's actually on the side of the entire base. You can see the whole base moves back and forth and the tray moves with it. It's a pretty cool place to set your work. Um, it doesn't interfere with the saw at all as the saw travels and moves back and forth, or as the base travels and moves back and forth. 
Um, it's nice when your pieces are wet, you can, if you're doing multiple cuts, you can throw them on there and some of the initial water can run back off into the tray itself. And uh, that's a pretty handy little feature. <clears throat> the next thing was the laser. You know, I read a lot of reviews, people talking about the laser and how it didn't really seem to do anything. Um, I used this in my garage because it was 110 degrees outside when I first started using it. And the um, I used it a lot. Part of what I did, you saw in the pictures, was wet stack, or excuse me, dry stack the brick. Um, my wife made that decision at the last second. She decided she didn't want any mortar. So I had to square a whole bunch of these bricks up. So I used the laser, which by the way, shows up hot pink for whatever reason in the video, but it's actually a red line on the saw itself. What I did with it, I used the laser to help me line up a brick and just trim off any high spots when I was trying to do some real accurate work. I got a herringbone I'm working on, a herringbone pattern, and the brick had to be pretty accurate. Um, so that was a pretty big deal for me. You can see that the laser shows up real well um, on your work as you make your cut and you can follow it. Again, it's adjustable. The laser is adjustable. I wish it had more of an adjustment though. And in that it's adjustable to this side of the blade and you kind of see it maybe on my finger there, but it's not adjustable clear to the other side of the blade. I wish that it was. Um, that would be very handy to be able to adjust that thing back and forth. But you can certainly adjust it to where it falls true on your cut to that side of the blade. The other tool that you have available is a little work light. What I found about the work light is it isn't super useful <clears throat> in that it doesn't, it doesn't shine on the work when it contacts the blade. You can see as the work moves through, the light hits it, but as you approach the blade, it gets darker and darker. So I didn't find that light super useful. I mean, you'd have to really want to get some hardcore light on it. The other thing it does is you can see that it obscures your laser light if you're trying to use it, which tells me that out in bright sunlight, that laser light probably line would probably go away completely. So that is what that is. Probably the single biggest reason that I ended up choosing this saw over the rest of them that I saw at the store, um, especially in this $300 price range, this is the only one that I found that was able to do plunge cuts. I knew I was going to have to do a lot of U-shaped cuts and things like that. If you spin this knob loose, then the saw will actually do plunge cuts like a compound miter. That was a huge, huge advantage for me as I was notching around um, plug-ins and things like that. <clears throat> I did have to cut quite a few notch cuts. The one thing you got to remember is as you plunge down, the blade also travels forward. And so you have to allow for that. And you just have to be a little careful, but you can bring it down to the height you want. You can also adjust it to a specific height and then move your work back and forth through the blade um, if you're trying to be real accurate in your cuts. But that was a big reason um, for me landing on this particular well, the big stain on the floor is just the residue I haven't cleaned up yet from when I first started using the saw. Um, you can see it kicked a lot of water around real fast. Um, we'll come back more and talk about that when we start talking about the water. It does have this rubber guard here, <clears throat> but the rubber guard is kind of a joke. It doesn't really do much. I've already seen a couple of reviews on the website where people are already complaining about that. But I did come up with a redneck solution that I think is brilliant and helps with that a lot. Um, while we're here, this the saw will miter. You can see that if I loosen this knob right here, it's got a gauge. It's highly accurate. It has markings at 0, 22 and a half and 45 degrees. It does have a stop at zero. It does have a stop at zero. You got to raise the saw up a little bit to make it work. And then you could adjust it and lock it down at any position you want. Um, I think, you know, I haven't used that feature really, but uh, hey, it's there. It beats poking the eye with a really, really sharp stick. By the way, when you want to make your plunge cuts, you really got to push down on the saw head itself um, to loosen it. If you just try to loosen this knob, it'll it wants to be tight and stay tight. But if you just push down a little bit, then the knob becomes real easy and you can just loosen it. Um, that's not a big deal, but I don't know. I reckon it's a good thing to know. 
One of the big complaints with the previous version of this saw was that the tubing for the pump um, kind of got in the way and had a tendency to be a pain and occlude um, the travel of the tray. You can see that they really did fix that. This is your water tube right here, goes all the way underneath um, to the pump. Also the electrical cord goes underneath to the pump. And it's not in the way. It doesn't occlude uh, the movement or it doesn't get involved in the movement of the tray at all. So that was a good fix. I guess uh, Lowe's actually paid attention to what people were saying.